Hello, hello, how y'all doing? Thank you so much for tuning into my channel again. This is R.T. Stroud, yes, the life coach and entrepreneur, dropping nuggets for you for those that are starting out in entrepreneurship or just thinking about it. This will be content for you. Today we'll be going over the 10, 10 mistakes that I've made uh, in entrepreneurship over the past five years that I've been doing it. And so that I know this will be a blessing unto you. You're definitely at the right place. So let's go ahead and get started. So, hey, we're going to start with number one. Uh, number one is going to be uh, me trying to figure it out, uh, figure it all out before I started. So what that means is that before I start any venture, uh, I'll be reading. I'll be wanting to read everything, read up on everything before I start. And and uh, what uh, Marie Forleo talks about is starting before you're ready. You know what I'm saying? You'll learn in the process. And so what I've learned currently now is that with uh, entrepreneurship, if you do that, you will be missing out uh, on you know potentially products that you're able to sell or patents that you have or stuff like that so for example um, uh, let's say have you ever had an idea uh, that you thought of you're like man if if I had this idea or if if I get this patent if we we figure this out how to market this and this that and the other this is going to be amazing and then you sit on that idea for like 30 days or maybe even a year or something like that and then you look up and then you start researching it further and you see that ah there was somebody else that's already you know, um, made that product or patent that or this, that, and other, and it was just recently. And you're like, dog it, if I would have did that one year ago, um, then I would be, you know, probably be a millionaire now or something like that. And so, uh, bottom line, that's that's what entrepreneur is currently right now. It's speed to market. So you may have a product or a service that you're wanting to offer and stuff like that. But if you're not quick on implementing it, somebody else could implement it, you know what I'm saying? And then you'll be, your idea will be null and void. Or you may have to enhance your idea a little bit and, you know, tweak it a little bit and go ahead and put it out there. Because, you know, no market has a monopoly on, on everything. And if it does, you know, then what happens if people start trickling into it and stuff like that. So that's what I would say. Start before you're ready on your idea. Get out there, you know, get it rolling um, do a lot of testing and learning. I don't know why we don't do that. You know, I, I learned that recently about, you know, just companies have apps they, and they have a beta version in which that has kinks in it and stuff like that. But we don't think like that as people, as a, a entrepreneurs. When I get out there and I, I'm doing something, I'm testing and seeing if this is going to be a good product, if the market is filling this and stuff like that. Do more testing and learning when you start out. And so that's why I was grateful for us when we connected to the Denton community market. Uh, before we opened a brick and mortar and this, that, and the other, we had the the ability to pay, let's say, uh, $75 for a year membership and then $15 a week to come and set up your tent and sell your cinnamon rolls. Man, that's low cost that I'm able to see, hey, are these cinnamon rolls awesome? Are they hidden? Do people like them? You know what I'm saying? What is the response of the market before I just go full fledged into open up a shop? You know what I'm saying? And so we got to be in that same mindset. Test and learn. Gary V talks about the same thing. When you're starting out, test and learn your structure. Test and learn it before you blow life into it and, and have a mass amount of people come into it. You know what I'm saying? And so that would be my number one. Uh, number two is... Uh, getting caught up, soaking up uh, many different strategies uh, and content and always changing them like the wind if they don't work within a week. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like we are in the information age. <laughs> you know that. I know that. I soak up a lot of information. There's a lot of different strategies out there. But it's like, you know, when you're starting out, you know what I'm saying? Duh, you, you, I'm going to give you two things. One is you need to give yourself 90 days. 90 days is a good enough time span where you can get some good data to see if this this strategy that I'm trying out is actually working or not. You know what I'm saying? And then the second thing is that you want to study those that are successful, that have the success that you wanna have, um, and, and they're, they're doing proven strategies that are working, that are being awesome, and all that good stuff. So 
I'm, I'm going to encourage you in that. So for me, it's like uh, Patrick Bet David has awesome strategies. He has awesome videos that he does. And, and I see the success of his PHP agency, you know, selling insurance and he's doing well. And so I want to hone in and focus on what strategies is he using? You know, and I, you know, I like the success that he has and I would like to mirror that or model that, you know what I'm saying? Cause again, there's so much content out there and you don't want to get caught up in all the different strategies. You want to you know, pick a few and go after it, do it 90 days, see if it works and go from there. So, all right, number three is not having a mentor that was ahead of me in my same niche that I looked up to and desired to model my company after. So uh, that goes along the lines of the same one as soaking up information. It's very important to have a mentor, somebody that you're following um, that's in front of you, that's ahead of you, that's in your same niche, you know what I'm saying? And um, that's gonna help propel your, your success even uh, forward further faster. And now that we got online, there's a lot of ways that you, YouTube and you know all these different influencers, there's several different people that you can check to see that follow your beliefs, that have your beliefs and are living the life of success that you want to live, okay? And so that would be another one. Number four, I would say, uh, not getting to know myself sooner. You know what I'm saying? I, I, you know, uh, on my actual Facebook page, it's just still my name, RT Stroud. You can, you know, go there and friend request me. I'm putting specifically up there, um, quotes, daily quotes, uh, with themes in them. Like this week I'm doing like the subconscious mind and all that good stuff versus the conscious mind. So, but bottom line, I'm, I'm putting quotes and stuff up there. But what I'm saying is you need to get to know yourself. That's the greatest person that you can get to know. Not somebody, not Grant Cardone, not Gary Keller. Or no, I'm not. I'm sorry. Gary, uh, Gary, Gary V. That's what I mean. Grant Cardone, not, not Patrick Bet David. You, you are the most important person to get to know. You know why? Because, man, your brain and you are like a supercomputer. Once you learn your supercomputer and how you best work, then you're able to plug in and do things efficiently. I'll give you an example. Like for me, for a long time, I would get writer's block. And I was like, why am I getting writer's block? You know what I'm saying? But what I began to notice about myself is that I have ideas. And if I dump them first, dump them all down first, then organize, then I don't get writer's block. So therefore, I know how I best operate. So whenever I go into a project or an assignment, it's like, hey, brain dump first, Artis, you know, dummy, idiot, I just joking, I'm messing with you guys. Brain dump first, and then uh, after you brain dump, you know what I'm saying, then organize your thoughts and all that stuff, you know what I'm saying, and so, because it's all jumbled up in there. So that that's me. But you got to get to know you. And so that's what I would say there. Uh, number five is to uh, try to start s trying to start somewhere that I'm not. Um, I would say this, man. When I first started out, man, you want to get, hey, all the latest tools and gadgets and all this stuff, you know, and even though you can't afford it, you want to get all that stuff. I would say start where you are. Like even now, I'm shooting this video on my iPhone 8 Plus and it looks professional. I am starting with where I'm at. Six months from now, you know, once my YouTube channel blows up, you know what I'm saying? May, will I get something else? Possibly, you know? But I am starting where I'm at. People want to, um, uh, what I've learned even in the, um, with the other businesses that I have, people want to follow you along your journey they want to be a part of it they say hey man i was i was with them when i was you know what i'm saying when they had zero subscribers when they had 10 subscribers i followed that dude man you you just coming on to the scene now i was on there back then you know what i'm saying and so uh, that's very important to start where you are you know what i'm saying not only start start before you're ready but start with what you have you know what i'm saying you you have what you have and so just play those twos rightly all right, number six is not uh, investing or getting connected to my local chamber of commerce and going to mix and mingle events. And my first business that we had was Big, Big and Little Bites Catering. Uh, when we were coming along those two years, Marks, we had connected up with a uh, 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 an event boutique 
And one of the main things that they shared with us that really, you know, helped their their business explode, you know what I'm saying, and, and uh, was getting connected to the local chamber of commerce, you know, uh, and mingling with those that have, um, you know, big businesses uh, in the area, and it's just being around the right crowd. And so that's what I would say in regards to that. Um, and when you do that, birds of a feather flock together. Uh, you need, I think your income becomes the top five. I think it's top five people that are around you are, or would be your net worth. And it's so true. You know, they help elevate your mind too, as well, because you don't want to be the smartest person in the room. You, you want to be, you know, striving for better. And so that's what I would say there. I want to give some examples like Hollywood does the same things. There's a flock of people that hang out together. If you think of like Adam Sandler, in his movies, uh, when when I watch his movie, Rob Snyder is always in his movies. Um, there's some other people that are in his movie, but if you constantly see all his different movies, the same people are in his movies, maybe playing different characters, but they're all there. And so you want to run with a crowd of people like that. If you're on YouTube, you know what I'm saying, because uh, there's no chamber of commerce there, but maybe there's some influencers that are in your same niche that you can connect up with and partner. It has some of the greatest content that you have too as well and you're able to connect up with them and kind of go from there you know what i'm saying and, and uh, build with them like uh shout out to um uh entertainment value entertainment not value entertainment entertainment research uh, the person that helped me write this i'll put her information in here and you can come check out her channel she's an awesome woman i uh, really appreciate her you know putting comments down but uh, i'll put her stuff in the description so you can check out her channel too as well um, so, but yeah, I just, just again, connecting up and mingling with other influence, YouTube influencers that are in your same niche is what I would say. And, and don't just go in there and, and, and try to steal their audience, provide some value to them. Like, how can I serve you? How can I help out? You know, give them nuggets in which to help them flourish. And then, Hey, they, you know, just things will be reciprocated. Uh, another example is comedy. Um, you know, you Kevin Hart. Kevin Hart. I read his book. The you know uh, the um, you can't make this stuff up. Then he talked about in there how he got started and somebody took him under their wing and mentored him, and uh, you know mentored him and helped him out in so many different ways. Uh, and then uh, Rhonda, there's a Rhonda lady, a black lady named Rhonda something who's a comedian. And he got into that circle and with them and all that stuff. And it was just amazing. It was awesome. So the same thing for you. Get invested into a community. And this this will, uh, I'll talk about community more in a second. Number seven is being cheap on my self-development in courses. Um, don't be cheap on your self-development in courses, man. I gave you some books to read get the books. I don't care how you get them. You know, I, I did leave out that, man, if you can't afford them, go to the library. Most of those books that I recommended, those five or six that I recommended in my last videos, go to your local library. You can get them from your local library, uh, put them on hold. You can even, I, I think libraries are getting more um, sophisticated. They're are starting to do digital platforms on digital platforms, uh, Screeby or something like that, Hoopla, and all that stuff, but man, get invested in your low. Don't allow money to get in the way of your education and all that good stuff. And so, for example, I went to um, the Vault Conference. I'm always talking to you guys about value Taylor and Patrick Bet David. Um, let me tell you a quick story uh, with him and how I did not go cheap. Uh, back in 2015, I watched his video, uh, The Life of an Entrepreneur, in 90 seconds, and that just revolutionized my life um, and it just really you know gave me wings and I, I subscribed to Valuetainment then what and that was when he had like 250,000 subscribers and then he said in all of his videos he kept saying hey when I reach a million subscribers I will do a conference you know what I'm saying it'll be the verse uh, Valuetainment conference and I was like yeah right you're gonna do that you know so last year he met in 2019 a million subscribers and I told myself if this dude puts on this conference I'm gonna go so with that said and it happened to be in my uh, hometown of uh, you know 
Texas, Texas, and state, home state, Texas. And man, this is what I got. Uh, the Vault Conference 2019, Patrick Bet Davy. Patrick Bet David, it says, Cracking the Code to Entrepreneurship. In this book, in this book alone, this book is amazing. You know what I'm saying? It goes start to finish of um, how to build a company, how to scale it, how you know how to build leadership, how to, you know how to figure out you, uh, figure out your path. Um, you know, um, it's just that your 21 next moves or 15 next moves. Uh, man, this dude is is is. This was 800. I, I spent 800 to get to this conference, and I'm so glad I did. This alone is worth the price of a minute. This is going to build businesses, y'all. This will build businesses for years to come, you know, just from this this vault deal. And you can only get this at the vault. So I bought one for me. I also bought one for my wife. You know what I'm saying? I, I bought a blank one. And so this is the kind of the stuff that I'll be teaching you. So that alone was worth the price of admission. I didn't need to pay, you know, any more, uh, you know. So anyway, uh, I'm going to jump off that soapbox. But that was just an amazing conference that I went to. And I'm glad that I invested in myself. I'll put a link down below uh, because there will be a value attainment conference 2020 uh, but I'll put you uh, um, a link below for the one that went in 2019 and hint hint I'll put on there that I was actually in there in their little commercial that you'll see if you check it out and I'll be dropping some information there too as well but that was so cool to be a part of that all right um, let's see verse uh, number eight Share my dream with small-minded people or even the people that are in your same boat. When you're first getting started out, you do not want to share you know, your dreams with small-minded people or those that are in your same boat. Because guess what? They, they're like crabs in a bucket. They don't want you to succeed. They don't want you to grow. If you're starting a YouTube channel, you need to connect with people that are already started a YouTube channel. Because, you know, they they got your same interests at heart. You know what I'm saying? You, you just want to be around those people that are going to fan your flame. That's what Will Smith said. You want people that's going to fan your flame, that's going to encourage you to keep going when it gets hard and motivate you and hold you accountable uh, during the process of this, man. Because you have a lot of people that you have to meet. Man, it's lonely out here with entrepreneur, uh, being an entrepreneur. I'll be honest with you. You have to be a lone ranger. You got to be shameless. You got to be out here. And, and just be able to be okay with being alone for a while. First, they'll be like, man, why are you doing what you're doing? And then later on, they'll be like, you know, how did you do it? You know what I'm saying? People want to talk to you. You Go back and talk to those people after you have your success, okay? Then you have some credibility. Then they'll want to listen and all that stuff. That That's what I'm going to say there. You know what I'm saying? Bottom line. So uh, that's why the importance of the conference. I threw in that conference, the course. I've connected with some people from that conference that I got, I got, I met somebody in, uh, uh, from Marco, China, Marco, China. I didn't even know that that existed. And I'm still friends with that person now today. We're still holding each other accountable, sending emails back and forth, even instant message through Facebook, man. It's been awesome. Uh, so shout out to, uh, man, Marco Chalk, I think is his name, but, um, Anyway, he's got a YouTube channel too, and I'm trying to encourage him. So, uh, number nine, not having a right now mentality uh, that your clarity comes in the doing. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes we get, I get analysis paralysis. And so I find that when I actually do, I get clear on what it is that I'm supposed to be doing. So as I'm going down a route and I'm actually doing it, executing on it, then it's like, oh, I need to do this or tweak that, or no, I don't need to be doing this. I need to totally go a different direction. So um, that's what I would say. Having a right now mentality um, has has been a world a lot. Man, let, let's let's just be honest. A lot of people, when they're uh, going down this process, they they they're cool with studying. They're cool with studying, but they fall in the execution portion of things. You know, executing, execute on your plan. Uh, I think uh, General Patton said, uh, 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 a uh, imperfect plan executed violently, you know what I'm saying, today is better than a perfect plan next week. So, man, execution on that right now personality. And lastly but not least, thinking that having a, uh, and completing a large to-do list is where it's at. Um Man, when I first started out, man, I would have like 10 or 15 things on my list every day to get done. 
and it it didn't really serve me well <laughs> you know in doing that because i would get discouraged something would come up i would only finish three or four or five and then i'm like dang it i, I you know my self-confidence would wane and go down and stuff like that but um then i got connected and you know went further and learned about i don't know if you ever heard of mark lamonis um, from the prophet uh, he, he talks about the top 10 rules for success. Evan Carmichael does. And I'll, I'll, put, I'll post that video down there, a link to it, to check that out. But one of, one of the ones that he tells you to do is that, man, have a list of three things, top things you need to do to get done before 11 in the morning. And then allow the rest of the day to just kind of have meetings and fizzle out because you can do all those other different things. You know what I'm saying? So... Uh, I was like, okay, I tried that out. That was good for a while to do the three. But then I met, I got a book back there called The One Thing. I don't know if you guys see that right there. The One Thing, man, to get extraordinary results. Man, I, I, I looked at that and that just rocked my world. You know what I'm saying? And so, uh, and the one thing is, finds this is the question you ask yourself with the one thing. Today, what is the one thing that I can do for my one thing such that by doing it, everything else will be easy or unnecessary. And so when you're doing the one thing, everything else falls into place. So for example, for me, what I'm doing today is Saturday for me. I know Monday is, I'm supposed to be dropping this content. But Saturday for me, I got a lot of stuff planned throughout the day. This was the main thing I wanted to get done. I get this video done because I'm my goal is to build my YouTube channel, be consistent in doing this on Mondays, dropping this content. Uh, so then secondly, uh, if I get to it, I want to do a Facebook Live on this Saturday on my Facebook uh, so that people will know, hey, I'm closing out the subconscious mind versus the conscious mind, and what is the next few quotes or the theme that I'm going to be doing for the next week? You know what I'm saying? So you see what I'm saying? So those are the two things I want to get done, and there's a third thing that I want to do, but, but if I just get this done, hey, I've exceeded and excelled what I was, you know, uh, came to do, so... With that said, man, that are that are my those are my top ten, um, and I also put a link to Patrick Beck David's mistakes because those helped me out too in this process. And hey, this is what I want to encourage you in that I believe that we all go through mistakes. Yes, these may help you to avoid some too as well, but don't get it discouraged because you have to go through mistakes. And I believe specifically that. Um, all things work together for your good. I would not be the person today if I did not go through those, you know, lessons that I got a chance to learn along my journey. So these are life lessons that you're going to learn in entrepreneurship, you know, uh, period along this process. So again, this may help you to get, you know, uh, uh, you know, steps further very quickly, but then you're going to have your own hurdles, your own mistakes that you have to get through. But be patient with yourself. It's all part of the process and enjoy the process because you have to become the person before the money gets there. And it's not you get the riches first and then you become. No, you become the person first, then the, the money follows. So anyway, with that said, man, I hope that any this information has blessed you. Uh, man, share below uh, one uh, out of the 10, which one was most encouraging to you and helped you um, along your journey as far as my mistakes. Uh, and then, hey, share this with one other person and subscribe. And until next time, this is our T. Stroud, the life coach and entrepreneur, you know, signing out, man. Thank you so much for rocking with me. Peace.